Twitter has flagged a tweet from Republican Congressman Paul Gosar that depicted the anime killing of Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. It also showed an attack on President Joe Biden, which means that it went against the terms of service for Twitter. Here's a little look at what the tweet looked like or showing how Twitter had flagged it. But decided to keep the tweet up because they believe that it serves a public interest or the public would be interested in seeing it. Now with that said, the video that was embedded is what we're gonna go to next and I'll explain to you guys what's happening in the video. Um, so let's take a look at that. Uh, so in this video, representatives uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene and uh, Lord Boebert are depicted as heroes from this Japanese anime series known as Attack on Titan. The post-apocalyptic series revolves around a small civilization that lives in a bordered, uh, bordered off city to protect itself from giant human-like creatures called Titans. Ocasio-Cortez's face is then superimposed on one of the Titans. Uh, who is killed by Gosar's character. His character also attacks a Titan with Biden's face on it. So that's what we're looking at right now. And uh, I just wanna remind everyone that this is um, a Republican member of Congress in his 60s. We're still in the middle of a global pandemic. We're in the middle of supply chain issues. We're in the middle of a lot of chaos right now. But Paul Gosar would rather spend his time tweeting ridiculous anime videos like that. And then of course, as soon as he's called out on it, minimizing the fact that he is you know, inciting violence, making light of harming other members of Congress who happen to be his political opponents. It's just. This is what they do. This is what the Republican Party has been reduced to. Yeah, you know, I was gonna make an analogy about like, oh, I'm, you know, if I put out a video in just the like same way anime, et cetera, decapitating Ted Cruz, the outrage that would come from the right wing would be legendary. Oh, like this is what the Antifa people do. The liberal fascists, okay, and you know, and they would cry and cry and cry. And by the way, Rightfully so, like don't show people getting decapitated or killed, etc. Right? Um, then I realized I don't really need the analogy. Uh, Kathy Griffin actually showed a decapitated Trump head, which obviously was not real. With QAnon people, you have to clarify everything, right? <laughs> okay, Kathy Griffin did not actually kill Donald Trump, he's still alive. Uh, and they went nuts, nuts, and they banned her, they canceled her, they etc. Now that one. Looked a lot more realistic, so keep it real, right? Uh, and and I didn't think that was a good idea either. Um, and so, but the selective outrage uh, when when anything is done to the right wing, oh my God, they didn't wish me Merry Christmas. I'm uh, every Democrat has to apologize to me when they uh, show Democrats getting. I mean, Anna, to your point, it's like a 60 year old uh, guy killing a, a woman in her. I think she's still in her late 20s, maybe early 30s at this point, just get killing her. And they're like, yeah, we're gonna kill that girl, ah, ah, right? And they think like, oh, what, 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 you can't take a joke? I guarantee you if I say one joke about you guys, you will all crumble and cry for months. Yeah, I mean, and, and the thing is, this has been the type of treatment that Certain representatives like Ocasio-Cortez have been dealing with and there have been absolutely no consequences whatsoever. So in response to this, AOC tweets, so while I was en route to Glasgow, a creepy member I work with who fundraises for neo-Nazi groups, which by the way is true, shared a fantasy video of killing me. And he'll face no consequences because GOP leadership cheers him on with excuses, fun Monday. Well, back to work because institutions don't protect women of color. She also says, remember when Yoho accosted me on the Capitol, at the Capitol, and called me an effing you know, bitch. Remember when Green ran after me a few months ago screaming and reaching. Remember when she stalked my office the first time with insurrectionists and people locked inside. All at my job and nothing ever happens. Which is true. I mean, look, Marjorie Taylor Greene has been stripped of her, um, you know, committee assignments because of other awful and anti-Semitic things she's uh, said. But in terms of treatment of other members of Congress, it seems like Republicans tend to get a pass. 
And one more tweet from Casio Cortez. She says, this dude is just a collection, this is my favorite part, of wet toothpicks anyway. White supremacy is for extremely fragile people and sad men like him, whose self concept relies on the myth that he was born superior because deep down he knows he couldn't open a pickle jar or read a whole book by himself. Um, so that was her uh, reaction to it. Uh, Nancy Pelosi, House Speaker, on her part, has um, really done nothing. Uh, put out like a, a, a strong statement about how this is unacceptable, but okay. But it's not really up to Pelosi, right? It's really up to Republican leadership to uh, set the tone here. And they really refuse to do anything about this kind of behavior. So there's a couple of facets to the story. The first, um, it, you never see anybody going after Steny Hoyer, right? He's actually the number two Democrat in the House. You'd never know it. Why? Because Steny Hoyer, first of all, totally agrees with Republicans and secretly helps them kill every good provision in any bill. So they're not interested in attacking Steny Hoyer because he's a corporate Democrat like they're all corporate Republicans. But secondly, because it's not fun killing a guy in his, a white male in his 70s. But for the right wing, they get off on attacking women of color. They do. The younger the women are, the more they are attracted to that kind of violent imagery, okay? And if you remember, this is the same thing that the immigration officials did at the border. And recently we did a story about how they weren't punished at all, right? And so there's something about AOC and young women of color that drives these right wing men crazy and awfully and often with sexual and violent imagery. And there's something wrong with them. They should get mental health counseling. Okay, now secondly, why GOP leader in specific that Twitter handle is referring to Kevin McCarthy. That's his handle now because he's the the leader of the Republicans in the House. And and Kevin McCarthy, of course, is not going to do anything about Paul Gosar because his entire caucus is now turned to violence. So then he they'd say, wait a minute. Well, how about Matt Gates and Cawthorn, who are all constantly talking about the Second Amendment and if the government officials come to your door, kill them and all these different things that they're implying or sometimes flat out saying. Uh, and aren't you gonna do anything about that violence? That's a more direct threat of violence. No, he's not gonna do anything about that because now over 30% of Republicans think that uh, that they should do violence. He's not gonna like go against, he's not gonna take out half his caucus and he's not gonna go against 30% of his base that says, let's start killing him. So like anime is the least of McCarthy's problems. The Republican party has turned violent and they're not gonna go back. Uh, and they're not going to condemn each other for all agreeing to violence. Which you know tells you everything you need to know about the Republican Party and its failed leadership at the moment. And what's also fascinating is the fact that Paul Gosar's own family on multiple occasions has come out to speak against him. In fact, on this particular issue, Gosar's own sister made her rounds in the press and just straight up called him a sociopath. I want to go to that video, that's video C3. Yes, Allison, it definitely is getting worse because no one, no one holds him accountable. And that this is something that I have to openly wonder, does he have to act on it himself before we believe that he is an absolute, he's a sociopath. And what's more, we know from everything we have seen, and certainly Attorney General Garden has seen much more of it than I, that there is evidence to show he was a, in a conspiracy to commit treason against the United States of America. Where? Is the accountability. You know, I have to say, she makes a point about the DOJ refusing to get involved in any of this. And I think that's a good point. I mean, remember, Trump isn't the one in charge right now. President Joe Biden is, and he's got a cabinet full of people that he has himself nominated and gotten confirmed through the Senate. I don't really understand, like, I don't really know where Joe Biden is, to be honest. I don't know what the DOJ is really up to. And the special panel investigating the riots on January 6th, like, all I can really do is roll my eyes at everything that's been coming out of that. Like, all of the focus has been in the wrong direction, and all of their consequences for individuals who have completely ignored subpoenas have been weak. Uh, and I think I'm being generous in calling it weak. I would use other language that I'm not even allowed to use on the show right now. So I, I just the the weakness and the pathetic nature of the Democratic Party also does not really give me a lot of confidence that anything will be done about this kind of situation. 
So this story actually is a good look at both parties and what's wrong with both parties. So um, there's Paul Gosar's sister and his all of his siblings have come out against him on numerous occasions saying, look, you guys don't get it. He's part of our family. We know he's mentally unbalanced. Somebody should do something. But Republican voters see someone who's mentally unbalanced and they think, boy, like that to them, they're like, I, I don't, they don't see the problem. <laughs> they're like, that's the feature, not the bug. And so, I mean, you name it, the, the uh, party leadership is filled with mentally unbalanced people. Donald Trump, uh, you know, just take any of their thought leaders, such as they are, Ted Nugent, whatever, you can go on and on. Rudy Giuliani, obviously mentally unbalanced. And Republicans look at that and go, yes. Finally, someone as nuts as me, yes, right? There's something deeply wrong with the Republican Party. Now, to the Democrats, to Anna's point, why doesn't DOJ do something? Well, they tried to do something when people were threatening to kill school board members. The Republicans called in the Attorney General and yelled at him, Merrick Garland, and Merrick Garland cowered. And then I'm I'm, so I guarantee you, Anna, that they got scared. Oh my God! Don't don't hold the Republicans accountable. They threaten to murder people. You get yelled at on TV. <laughs> so that now they're cow- like crying in a corner and can't do anything. And that weakness is a great example of what the Democratic Party has become. I got to be honest. It's really hard not to despise the Democrats. I mean, their weakness knows no bounds. Their failure to actually carry out their own promises to the very people who have elected them knows no bounds. Just one disappointment after the next, their weakness is pathetic. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more, there's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.